Hey, what's good, everyone? Welcome to Ice Rink Diaries. Local Ice Man here. And today's episode's gonna be a little edgy. You get it? Today's episode's gonna be about the edger. I'm gonna go over what the edger does, why we edge, and how we edge. Now, maybe some people can explain this in five, ten minute video. So I noticed a lot of YouTube videos, anything more than five minutes, you start losing people's attention. But I'm not that kind of person who can explain this in a few minutes. So as I was editing the video, I realized it was getting kind of long. It's gonna probably be about a 25 minute video. So I'm gonna break it up in two sections. The first one's gonna be theories and principles behind edgy. No, I wouldn't do that to you. I wouldn't do that to you at all. But the first video is gonna be off ice stuff, kind of about the edger, again, why we edge. And the second video is gonna be how we edge. It's gonna be on the ice, looking at the edger marks, the speed that we edge, the depth of edge that we do, how deep you should edge, and I'll also touch on how often you should edge, as well as the chipping, because chipping is important too. What we're looking at here is a Thompson Ice Edger. This is a walk behind model. There's various different companies that make a walk behind model. There's also a machine mounted model. And again, there's various companies that make machine mounted edgers. But for today's video, since I have a Thompson Ice Edger, it's gonna be about how to use the Thompson Ice Edger. But the edging principles stay the same from edger to edger to edger. So let's get at it. All right, so what we have here is a Thompson Ice Edger. This is a Pro 18, which i pretty sure stands for propane. And this is Thompson's standard propane edger. There's also a gasoline edger as well as electric edger. Now Zamboni makes its own edger, uh, Olympia makes an ice edger, and there's a few other companies that make ice edgers. Even though they all look a little bit different, they all do the same thing, which is edging the ice. So what this ice edger does, it notches an edge in the ice along the boards where the Zamboni can't get to. So why do we edge the corners of the ice and along the boards? The main reason is because the Zamboni itself, the blade, as you can see right back there, barely, it ends you know, right about here and the inside of my fingers. So you have like a you know, three quarters of an inch to an inch of space that you can't really cut with the ice. All right, I stand corrected. I think the one or two inches I said in the video is not correct. As I was editing it, I said, no, that's not right. So I measured it right here with the measuring tape. From the blade to the edge of the plastic running here is about an inch and three quarters. And you don't want to be running this thing against the, the kick strip. You want to be at least a finger length or two away. So it brings it out to about almost two and a half, three inches that the blade doesn't cut the ice with. And that could be up to six inches in the corner that the blade doesn't get into. So that's where the bowl effect comes in. So where the conditioner actually sits sideways like this, and I'll do some illustrations here on the board and some in the book. The ice starts bowling up this way and the conditioner itself sits flat and the ice is curved and basically you can't really get a good cut on the ice because the conditioner is riding on top of it on the corners and and if that gets as more pronounced that gets I mean that happens on the first pass but you know if you go months without edging that you know that gets really curved you could go two three passes out with the blade really not making contact with the ice because one side of the conditioner is higher than the other side so by edging the ice it edges a little notch in the ice along the corner where the conditioner able to dip down and start cutting in the ice all right back to the zamboni maintenance book because they could draw pictures better than me so here's a good illustration in the zam book of the ice bowling up and the conditioner itself becomes tilted even though the blade is flexible it's not really going to contour the ice and cut it out and this bowling effect can happen two passes out as well and as a result you can't really cut a flat sheet of ice this picture is showing it there's an attachment that goes on the zamboni itself an onboard edger like i talked about which we don't really have and there's also a push behind edger the zamboni push behind edger again we have a thompson ice edger but essentially it notches a, a notch in the ice along the corners and it allows the Zamboni blade to dip down on the edge and start ripping the ice out to level the ice out. <laughs> the best at drawing, so bear with me. Imagine that if this pin is the side of the conditioner, as you get into the corners, there's a good section of the corner it can't get to because you have a flat edge going around a round corner. So that's where the edger comes in. And along the straightaways, you get a little bit closer, but again, in, in, in the corners, you can't really get that flat edge in the corner. Therefore, there's a part of the rink that starts bowling up and as well as you come into the corners if you don't turn your water in time and you make your churn water centrifugal force from the from the towel from the water starts working its way into the corners and kind of builds up the corners so that's where the the edging comes in and along the straightaways again i can relate this to when you're mowing against your fence 
If you have a, you're mowing against your fence, you're mowing the grass, uh, the lawnmower housing where the blade is, you have wheels on your lawnmower, it's just not going to quite get against the fence, so you have to weed whack it. So that's basically what the edger does. Since the conditioner itself houses the blade, doesn't really get up to the board, there's a little tiny spot along the straightaways you have a, a tiny edge you have to edge. Whereas the corners, since you're, you're turning in the corners, it's a little more exacerbated. And I'll say even too, we don't have our small rink anymore, but if you have a small rink with tight corners, and you bring the, the Zamboni in there, there's a lot of space you're not gonna be able to get to. And that's where I see where people edge one time around, then they come around and edge again to feather into the second one. And that's where two passes with the edger coming out a second pass really helps keep your corners down on the small rink. An illustration of the ice and the ice blowing up. So when the edger comes along, it just edges off, you know, part of the ice, so the conditioner can drop in there and flatten the ice out. I guess before we go on the ice, let me show you a couple of things on this edger and what's going on. Just a few things about this machine right here. Again, it's propane. It draws from the top, so it's drawing a vapor out. There is no converter, so to say, because it's drawing a vapor. It doesn't need to convert to a liquid. It's basically, kind of a lot more engines on the edger. A few things about this, this is right here is a handle that that raises it and lowers it. I switch hands here, so that's lowering the edger and this is raising it right here. And as you're lowering the edger down to the ice with the handle, it just kind of spreads the wheels out and lowers it down as well as it kind of dips it a little bit down towards the edge of the boards. This right here is where the powder comes out on the other side right here. This is where the edger runs against the boards and this is just a little blade guard so to say our old edger didn't have this so the edger itself will also leave a little ridge along the I don't know, along the kick strip on the bottom just because the edger blade can't touch the boards all right as you see there's the edger blade right there it's that little part right there this little square part and it's hooked on with a bolt and a nut and this blade actually sticks out just a little bit not very much you probably can't even see it on a camera oh there a little bit it sticks out a little bit from this metal um, runner right here and what you do is you adjust this little roller ball here with these bolts right here to adjust it so it's um, you could have a, like a I guess a wide piece of ice you could have to chip at the end or you could have a narrow one the more this is in the less it's gonna leap behind you get the main purpose of the edger is because the Zamboni itself because of the housing and because the corner is round it can't the blade itself can't get in the corners so there's a, a big section of the ice that doesn't get cut now this does a much better job and gets in close to the edge of the boards, but there's still a tiny spot it doesn't really get because you don't really want to risk digging into your kick strip and digging your kick strip out. So you have a little setting here that keeps it away from the boards. And as a result, you have a little strip left over to come with the chipper to chip it out. But there's a roller right there, there's a roller right there, and this is the stud right here that runs against the boards. And I'll show you that when I get on the ice. I already have the edger propped up here for us to take a look at underneath. And this is uh, the bar that the two blades attach to. We got one right here and one right here. I also want to add that not all edgers look like this. Some edgers have a round disc, a big round disc that's in here. The Zamboni ones, the Olympia ones. And they have, uh, I'm not sure exactly, but there's like eight blades around. And the blades are a little bit longer and a little bit, it's probably like, a, I don't know, about as long as my finger. And it's a, a blade with a, a sharp edge on it so I can't talk too much about it because we don't have one but this Thompson ice edger this is, has two opposing blades on either side of this blade bar right here and they kind of oppose each other as they spin and this one you're able to spin around this actually has multiple edges on it so you're able to spin this little blade around to different edges and then flip it over and use the other four edges as far as changing the oil, this is where we drain the oil right here. Usually got to put some channel locks on there where I take that cap off. I use 5W30, the same as the Zamboni, just easier. Now this thing runs about, I don't know, what, about six to eight minutes every time you edge. And that's, that's including warm-up time and stuff. And if you do that about five days a week, it works out to be about 30 to 35 hours a year. That might not be a high hour usage for this machine but there's two things to consider you're sucking in moist air on top of it's a pretty heavy load when you're lowering it down onto the ice engines like this can tolerate that kind of load but it really breaks the oil down faster and the fact that you're really sucking in pretty moist air cold air from the rink it's just a good idea to change your oil 
I, I don't ever get how many hours they recommend. I think they probably recommend every 30 hours in the book, to be honest. So if you want to, if you don't, you definitely don't want to change the oil once a year in this thing. So I just, every time I change the oil on the Zamboni over here, I change the oil on here. And to change the oil, I got a pin on blocks and I kind of tilt it back this way to get the oil, the oil drain out. Usually do it after I do an edge so it's nice and warm and the oil just comes right out. I'll put that cap back on, funnel some oil in there and you're good to go. Real cool thing about this edge right here, it is electric start. That's the button right there you used to start it. Technically, you pull this dead man switch back, then you start your, your edger, this button right here. That's the battery. Sometimes we have to charge the battery because it doesn't really run enough, long enough to charge the battery. I talked to a guy up in Canada that had a propane edger, but he didn't have an electric start one. He said it was a bear to start. And I say that's, that's pretty true because I tried to start this thing without the battery when the battery died and I like, didn't have a charger. It's something I really couldn't do. Oh man, I almost threw my shoulder out trying to start it. The gasoline edger was easy to start, but this propane one could be a pain in the butt. So having an electric starter sure comes in handy. Just to give you a quick review of the edger, the main purpose of it is to edge the corners, and you know, like the name implies, but you're really trying to ensure a square edge along the boards, along the kick strip. Again, the bull effect happens because the Zamboni's conditioner is not able to get up against the kick strip, as well as the water. As the Zamboni mix churns in the corner, the water that comes off this towel right here, uh, the centrifugal force kind of carries it into the corners and pushes it in the corners a little bit. So to minimize that, you kind of ease your water on and off in the corners. Other things that note when I'm when you're running the, the edger against the boards, you lower it down, there's tons of powder coming out of here. And that's how you know how much you're basically you're digging is how much powder is coming out. And as well as when you edge, it leaves little striations on the ice. And I'll show you that. And the further the striations go out, the deeper you're going. So not only are you going down, it's kind of going out, it's curving out. All right, there you have it, part one of the ice edger. We went over why we edge, how we edge. So in part two, I'm gonna go over some on ice stuff, how fast you should walk, how deep you should edge, how often you should edge, as well as some important safety tips. Because one time I had a piece of the edger break off, piece of the edger blade, it flew across the ice, shattered a piece of tempered glass. So it's really important to have a healthy spec for your equipment. And we're the proper personal protection equipment, PPE, personal protective equipment. Is that what it is? Is that the buzzword? So when part two is ready, I'll leave it a link in the description below. You can check that out. All right, everyone, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something today. And like the local ice man says, stay cool.